Hey there, welcome back to Mastering Kinemaster Tutorials narrated in English. So, have you ever wondered how an intro like this is made with the K wheel spinning behind here and the Kinemaster going up and down here? It's done with layers. Layers are a way to organize content in kind of a stack on top of each other. Text layers, overlays, all of it. You may be familiar with some of it, but I'm going to show you in Kinemaster exactly how to organize, how they're placed, some of the properties of layers, a lot of things you can do with layers. So if you're interested in finding out more to take your video to a new level, literally a new layer, oh God, another bad joke. Anyway, stay tuned and let's just get right into it. This tutorial is generally about layers, but I want to discuss clips for a second. You're looking at a project that has two clips in it. One photo clip or background image clip and one video clip. Clips can be thought of as the bottom layer of a project, but they are handled differently. First of all is they're added hitting that media button. That will add a clip. So I'm just going to add one more background image to the tail end of this. And you can see that clips always take a spot in line in the first row. There's also always a transition between them, although the transition doesn't need to be used and these transitions are set to none, there will always be that gray box in there. Clips are always present in a movie. There's no spot when you scrub along the timeline that there won't be a clip underneath. They're the backbone of the movie and the entire length of the movie is the length of the start of the first clip to the end of the very last clip. The last thing about clips is that they are always shown side to side, top to bottom. In other words, there can be no hole punched out of the bottom of this or the bottom of this or the bottom of this. They take up your full screen vision, whereas a layer can take up only a portion of the screen. Now we're going to move into layers because that's really what the tutorial is about. Now I'm going to add a layer to this project. You can have media, effects, overlays, text, and handwriting. Right now we're going to go into our overlays because these show a lot of properties of layers. I'm going to add a cartoon speech bubble right here and I want you to check out a couple of things right away. First of all, you can see that there is a start and a finish to the time when this layer is. It starts at the timeline playhead where I dropped it in. So in this case, at two seconds, 0.55. There's no cartoon bubble here, no cartoon bubble. The cartoon bubble shows up and then it disappears after, in this case, four seconds. The reason for that default four seconds, I did another tutorial explaining that. You can actually change that, but go ahead and watch that one if you're interested. This was preset to have four seconds of any layer that we put in show up there. You can also see in this particular object is that it doesn't take up the entire screen. It can be moved around using your finger. It can be rescaled using your finger. It can be rotated using your finger. And there are other properties that we're going to get further into the clip you cannot move around like this you can have it rotated in the same fashion using your fingers and it's taking up the entire screen that is those are some of the major differences between clips and layers I hope now I'm going to show you a few things about how layers work in the timeline and how they can be manipulated in the timeline so just like other things when you select you Click on it, it turns yellow. Layers can be moved around, so the four seconds stays how long this is. I'm moving where in the timeline that it sits. So this cartoon bubble makes more sense in this part with me, me and my friend. So I have moved it there. I can move, I'm gonna push and select it. And so I'm holding down with my thumb, selecting the entire red area and I'm moving it. You'll notice that I'm not changing the amount of time that it is on the screen by doing that. In addition, if a layer is not a video layer, it can be stretched out for as long as you want, or it can be made shorter if you want. So this is how you change the length of any of the layers, an effect layer, an overlay layer, um, any layer that uh, a photo layer, any of them can be stretched out in length in that fashion. When you select and highlight yellow a layer, a new menu shows up. There's a lot of really cool things to go over in this, and we're going to go over them now. 
Many of the layers have settings, not all of them, but in this one in particular, we can set the color of the color number one and two from the cartoon speech bubble. I encourage you to always look and see if there is a settings menu and see what the different changes there are. Up at the top left, you'll notice here that there is an icon for the overlay. In this case, that allows us to change to a different overlay. And I'm doing this on purpose to show you that this particular style of cartoon bubble has different settings. It has three color settings. All kinds of different overlays have all kinds of different settings and you'll always find them in that settings area. Some other things to check out in this menu that gets pulled out. This is the in animation. This is the out animation. And this is the overall animation. Moving forward, we're going to add more layers because layers is plural and we can add more than one. I'm going to quickly add an effect. I'm just going to put a blur in here that will be a blur layer. And you see that it shows up there in my stack on my timeline. And I'm going to add one more before I talk about this. Actually, I'll add two. Why I did all of that is to show you what happens with your timeline. As you can see right now, we can only see two of our layers, even though we have four of them there. You can use your thumb to scroll down and then all four of the In your left hand up. menu over here, this is the layers menu. It changes your view. Notice on the right hand side down here, there is the video itself, but in the top you have much more ability to see many more layers that you have there. In terms of the number of layers you can have, it's really dependent on your phone. The only unfortunate thing about this view is that you can't edit a single layer from this standpoint. So what you actually need to do is if you go into this view, which again is accessed through that kind of layers looking thing on the left hand menu, select the layer that you want to work on and then go back up to the top and it's going to be highlighted already. The next thing I'm going to show you is the top to bottom organization and movement of layers backwards and forwards. I've changed things around in our stack, but I'm showing you the same stack that we had before. You can't see the word hello right now. What should I do about that? We put it down too early. Well, I select it, I make it yellow, and then I click these three dots here and a menu shows up that gives me options to reorganize these. I'm going to bring it to the front so it sits on top. I changed it to green while you guys weren't looking. But now we have hello at the top of our stack. What else might we want to do? The blurry area I really had wanted in further back. And so I select and highlight in my timeline blur circle. I open up this same menu again and I'm going to hit send to the back. Look at that. It went behind my objects. I'm going to spread it out and you'll notice one thing. It's on top of the clip. Remember, Clips are always at the bottom layer. So when you say send a layer to the back, you're actually talking about the back aside from the clip. All right. But this is really useful to be able to reorganize your objects and create the order of them that you want. A thing about KineMaster that it doesn't do is that it only changes it in your preview. You'll notice that the order in our menu never changed. I'm going to click hello again. I'm going to move it and I'm going to change the order of it. I'm going to send it to the back. We won't see it anymore, but you'll notice in our, in our timeline, it did not rearrange itself. This is something that you just have to understand that the way the timelines work and what you're looking at on screen is what it really is. The order in the timeline, the stack in the timeline does not actually correspond to your visual top to bottom layer order in your actual project. All right, I hope I was able to show you something new about organizing your content in layers in KineMaster. Remember, if you like this channel or if you want to see more, please subscribe, like it. If you have any future questions that you want to ask me to do a video about, write something in the comments. Feel free to communicate with me and get out there and make some cool stuff with your videos with KineMaster, my favorite mobile video software application. See you next time. <laughs> Can the master?